Welcome to Specific Love, back by popular demand and because I just like making them. Here's 20 French cleat ideas for your tool storage. Number five, let's begin. Have you ever got done standing a project and you put it on your workbench and you're like, oh no, now I can't do anything because it's drying on my workbench. Well, I have a great solution for you. Create this awesome little holder, little drying rack for your French cleat wall. It's a real simple design using some three quarter inch plywood. Actually, you'll need three pieces, one main for the front, a backing, and of course your cleat on the back. I have a couple two inch hinges that hold everything together and the great thing is it can fold out of the way. Also, because I have two independent ones, I can move it as far apart or as narrow as I want to put this up on your wall. So, let's do this. Next up is this craft stick holder, originally designed by a friend of mine named Chris over at A Glimpse Inside. Now this is a real simple design, it's basically just a box, but it is set at a slight angle, probably about 15 degrees, which makes it really easy to grab and put these back. You can put not only craft sticks, but I actually made some of my own using some scrap wood. But this is a great way that you can stir paint, you can do just about anything, craft sticks come in real handy in your workshop. Have you ever been in the middle of trying to glue something up? Now you have your glue stick or whatever you're using and well, you don't want to put it down because then it's going to leave a spot and there's just going to be glue everywhere. Well, I have a great way to fix that. So I created this awesome little holder that holds a total of four of these little glue brushes. To do that, I just have a piece that comes out and little grooves in the top of them so that it fits right like so. Nothing fancy. On the bottom down here I actually have one of the little silicone trays and to hold it in place I have just a couple little squares cut out because the bottom of this has a grid like pattern. So it fits in there and it's held nice in place. I also happen to have one of these little glue spreaders It's for the larger glue ups that can fit right here on the top behind all the brushes. You can just carefully put everything in place. So if you happen to have any glue on your brush Stick it in here, give it some time to dry, and you don't have to worry about getting glue all over the place. I recently bought a screwdriver set and I needed a holder for them. So, I built this simple little holder. It's basically just a shelf with individually sized holes for each of the screwdrivers so they don't rattle around and fall out. Underneath I added a couple supports just for some additional strength. I also have one of those demagnetizers, magnetizer little blocks that comes with some of the screwdrivers and I built its own little shelf down here. And it's really simple, really easy, I hope you get to make one. Now for those of you who do not have an electric stapler, I do suggest getting one. They come in real handy when you need it. I happen to have one and I created a nice little holder for it. It's real simple. It's basically just a flat board with three pieces coming out. And that is to hold one where the handle is here and one in the back to keep everything from rattling around, falling out. I also have a little dowel sticking out that will allow me to store some of my staples and the cord itself. It's a real simple design, real easy, and I hope you can make one too. Now if you just have a manual stapler, you can still create a nice little holder for it. In this case, I just have a nice backdrop with an oval style little piece that comes out with a notch in the top and that allows the stapler to sit nice and firm and not rattle off if by chance you bump it. Now if you have the even older version, it too will sit in the same kind of configuration and you don't have to worry about it falling off either. So in either case, here's a great way to make a little holder for your stapler. On occasion I work on my car and so I had to build some decent car ramps so I could drive my car up on so I could get up under it much easier. Great thing about these already being wood, all you need to do is add a simple French cleat on the back and hang them on your wall. That simple. In a previous video, I made my pocket hole jig into a nice little French cleat setup, but I recently picked up a new set. This is a real simple setup that works in tight locations, except because it's several individual pieces, you can easily lose these. That is, until I created this awesome holder. Now this is a real simple setup. I have a nice box over here that not only houses the main unit, but also the instruction manual, just in case I need it. 
it slides right in place. To hold the drill bit, I have a block that has a hole drill all the way through, and a screw bit, I have one here that does not go all the way through. And the reason why is a drill bit has this little collar, can stop it, but the screw bit does not. So that holds those in place. Over here, I created a little box setup. Here's a little uh, clamp accessory that comes with it, and a nice little fancy Allen wrench that goes with the total setup, fits up here. It's just a hole that goes all the way through the block. It's a real simple design, and I hope you can make one too. A viewer by the name of Harry H. asked if I could come up with an idea for French cleats that would house all of his fishing gear. So this is what I came up with. So let me show you how I put it together. And now this is a very simple design. For the backing here, I'm using a two by six and the same thing on the front here for the middle shelf. Right here on this shelf, I've used a Forstner bit. I believe it was one inch to draw out a few grooves in here. You don't have to be very deep. It don't have to be very fancy. It's just so that the back of the rods don't slide around. For the top up here, I'm using a one by, and I used a hole saw to cut these out. I believe it was three inch, and that way the rods can fit up in. You don't have to worry about them falling over. Now for the bottom, I used a two by 10, primarily for the size because the tackle box is a lot bigger and you just need that size. Now for all the cases, I am using pocket screws to hold these together. I also suggest using some wood glue in here to make sure it is nice and strong. And if you want to add some additional supports underneath all these, you can. That is totally up to you. In the case, it's a very simple design and I hope you can use it. In a previous video, I made a nice little hole for my caulking tubes, but I didn't make anything for my caulking gun. So we came up with this real simple design. Real easy, just a couple pieces of three inch PVC with a wood backing so that they're all screwed in. It fits on the wall, you can easily stick the caulk guns in place. And I got two here, but you can make as many of these as you want. A few months ago for a project, I purchased a draw knife, and if you like hand tools, these are pretty awesome. The only thing is, it's a little bit difficult to store away, because it is a sharp knife on one edge, and you don't want kids to get to it. So I built this simple little holder that has basically two dowels on the end down here, and it fits right about where the handles go. It keeps everything nice and level, and you can store this up high, and that way the kids can't get to it. Now for those of you that like keeping all of your cleats pretty much entirely out of wood, here's a great way to make a simple holder doing just that. Chris over to Glimpse Inside came up with this great idea and I had to show you. It's real simple, real easy. Let me show you how he does this. Now to cut out this angle here is actually a lot simpler than it looks. He took a piece of plywood and angled it on an additional piece and using his table saw slit on a table saw, he just made one pass, move it over, another pass, and so on, and just make sure all of that area was cut out. And then glued an additional piece together. Real simple, real easy. Now these work great, especially for those that like to keep their tool bags. Now, of course, in your workshop, you're gonna to need to clean at some point. I have an old broom with a dustpan that happened to clamp together, so it makes that a little bit easier. But to store this in a corner or on the floor, well, I can sometimes just get in the way. So I created this awesome little mount holder that I can store it right here on the wall, up and out of the way. I purchased these off of Amazon. They're real simple. A lot of times you find these, these will be in plastic. I got these are metal, so they should last a long time. Of course, they're just on a two by six with some cleats on the back. I actually have two cleats so that as it goes in place and when you're pulling, it doesn't accidentally pull it off the wall. That's a great way to store your broom. Now here's a great way to store a socket set. Let me show you how. All right, this is actually a pretty simple setup here. If you look from the side, I actually have three tiers of wood just to space everything out so you can get to the back ones just as easy as the front ones. And some of these I have holes all the way through just to deal, for example, this extension and for the ratchet and for the screwdriver on this side. For some of these smaller pieces, I just have little holes partially through just to keep everything from falling out, but it doesn't fall through. For example, the same on that, I have a little nail little example, you can put an additional screw or nail in the hole to keep everything nice and sturdy, just like so. For the ones up here, I actually have screws for each one. So I've spaced each of these out individually, making sure they're about where I want them, and just have screws in all of them. It's a real simple way to store your socket set. Now let's say you have a bunch of random tools and you just want something really, really simple. Here's a great way to do that. Take an old tool belt. This is one of those one or two dollar versions you can get about anywhere. Just staple it to a piece of wood and it carries your great little pockets across the front. Put it on your wall and then you can easily add some tools. If you have 
have a bunch of hammers, here's a great way to store them. I have two pieces of three quarter inch conduit that stretch across on a couple two by fours that I just have strapped in place. And to get the correct measurement, I just took my hammers and I measured from the claw to the front and found where they rest on here the best and that allows them to sit on there nice and securely without them falling through. Now sometimes when you go to pull them out, the back of them might be slightly too wide and you just turn it sideways and get it in and out a little bit easier. It's a great way to store some of your hammers. Now here's a great way to store your boots on the wall. Now to store these up here is really simple. Just some long, these are I believe 7 16 inch rods that I have coming out, just off a solid piece of wood. These are slightly angled up so there's no chance of the boots falling off. And they just easily slide in each of the slots and you can store them and let them dry out if they happen to be soaking wet or sweaty. Now whether you're painting or staining, rags come in handy. So I created this awesome little rag holder just using a piece of four inch PVC screwed to a piece of wood. On the bottom and top, I have these little test caps that we can easily remove them, add more into it, put them back on. You don't have to worry about dust getting all inside. You can have easy access to your rags and it just stores right on your wall. Plastic bags, they're essential for any workshop where they're using them for trash to put paint brushes in or just to carry supplies. They are great to have. And this is a basic little dispenser that you can use to store them in. It has a hole in the top. You can add all your new ones and a hole out the front and you can pull out whatever you need. It's a real simple design. My son actually built this in a local workshop we had a few years ago. We have a thin piece of plywood for the front, for the bottom, and for the back. And then for the top and the sides, we have just some one by material. In any case, these are just hammered in place with a few small nails and it is sturdy enough that it should last a pretty long time. We have a dado right here on both sides of the front so that this can slide in. I actually have it upside down here. But in any case, this slides in and you can easily add your bags and store them up on your wall out of the way so you can have them anytime you need them. Now one thing you can always use in your workshop is extra room for your lumber. So I've created a lumber rack using the French cleats. In this case I used a 2x6 that I've cut down at about a 30 degree angle to give it strength but also have a little extra room underneath. I have one on each side of a long 2x4. In my case it's about 14 inches and that's so it can reach down to the second cleat below it and give it that extra support it needs because it's going to be holding a lot of weight. And the great thing about it, you can adjust these to whatever size you need so you can stick your lumber on it, whatever length it might be. And there you have it, 20 more French cleat ideas that I hope you can use somewhere in your shop. And if by chance you have any other great ideas, put those in the comments and who knows, I might make another video in the future. Otherwise, get out in your shop and have fun building. Welcome to Specific Love. Let's see, hold on, I just forgot what I was going to say. Manual style stapler. Manual style stapler. Different, uh, diff another video in the future. Hey. All right. <laughs> One more time. I have Don't do that. Here's 12. Oh. <laughs> you know it's real hardy. Screw it to some wood. Otherwise, get out in your. Uh, uh, that was perfect. A, a lumber rack. Lumber, 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 lumber. 20 funny, 20 funny. Wow, I can't talk right now. Your chop and get out in your. your I started to say chop. Why is this so hard? Words are hard. <laughs>